Hey Psy guys, Cyanide B here and welcome to another video. Today I am going to be telling the story of when my snake exploded. So I normally take Medusa to the vet about once a year just for a little checkup. They take samples and test everything just to make sure everything is tip top perfect. And this one time I took her in, this is probably about a year ago now, it was just routine checkup. Everything was normal. She was totally fine. I hadn't noticed any problems with her. Just a couple of days before the vet visit, I noticed that around her cloaca was really thick, thicker than usual. So with a snake, they have one opening. It's near the end of their tail and that's where everything comes out. So say the cloaca, like, you know, this is her body, whatever. The cloaca is like there. So her body was like thick, thick, thick. And then it got really short for the end of her tail. So it looked a bit unnatural. It looked a bit I thought, oh, maybe she just needs to, you know, go to the bathroom, whatever. I wasn't super worried. And the next day I noticed that it was still there and maybe even a bit bigger. So I was starting to get a little bit worried. But since we had the vet appointment the next day, I was like, you know what? She's seeing the vet tomorrow. I'm not going to rush her to the emergency vet or whatever right now if she's seeing a doctor in the morning. So I took her uh, to the vet the next day and they looked over her and they were like, yeah, she looks totally fine. And I said, hey, she looks really swollen around her cloaca. Is that normal? I've never noticed it with her before. What's happening? Happening there. And the vet said, oh no, it's fine. She probably just, you know, needs to needs to go to the bathroom. When was the last time she went to the bathroom? And I was like, I'm not really sure. Because sometimes she doesn't go for a few weeks and then she does and it's fine because snakes only eat once a week. They generally pass about once a week, but sometimes she doesn't pass for ages and that's totally normal with snakes. So I was like, oh, I'm not really sure. It's not like I keep a diary or anything. Then just as we were having this conversation, some liquid came out. So some urate. And she was like, oh yeah, there we go. No worries. And then she still looked really swollen so the vet was like she might be a bit constipated and I forgot to mention but there was a vet assistant there that day I think he was like a trainee like he was in vet school and he was kind of there sitting in to kind of see how things go and to get some work experience so this guy I don't think he'd ever worked on a snake before so this poor guy is like he's not even a vet it's his first day there he's just there kind of helping out and learning and I think yeah she gave him the head so he was holding on to her head and like making sure she was all chill here and then the vet goes and start squeezing her like a tube of toothpaste. <laughs> just picture like a tube of toothpaste. Just and there was so much. So much. Like they weighed her as their general routine before this happened. I think she was 900 grams or something like that. After she had relieved herself, she weighed like 750. So she'd lost like 20% of her body weight. So say you weigh 150 pounds. That means like 30 pounds came out of you in one fucking go. So <laughs> they squeezed her all out. And oh my god, like it was it was horrible. It was everywhere. The the assistant dude was talking about his shoes and I was like, Medusa, this is why we can't have nice things. This is why I don't take you anywhere. Uh, but yeah, she, she was totally fine. It was really quite funny. Um, the vet just said, because I was feeding her two smaller rodents at the time, because she was just not quite at the level for the next bigger size. So the vet said, probably because I was feeding her two rodents instead of one for each meal, there was a lot more fur. So the surface area of the fur had just caused a bit of impaction. So she told me to switch her to the next size up. She was like, look, she's ready for this next size. Just give her those and see how she goes. And I haven't noticed any problems since. And she never really seemed that that distress. So luckily I think we caught it pretty quick. It never actually caused any issues for her. It's just a really funny story. And then when I got her home, I was kind of worried every time we get home from the vet, I'm always a little bit worried that she's gonna be a bit defensive because, you know, think about how horrible it is for them. They get put in a bag, they get driven in a car, which is the most foreign experience to these animals that you can possibly imagine. And they have to go like sit in this weird, dry, cold waiting room. I mean, I always bring a hot water bottle and like put her on top of it when I'm there, but still it's uncomfortable comfortably dry for them, it's cold for them. And then they get opened up and there are these bright lights, they're on this steel table, they're being touched by people they don't know. And they always restrain her a lot when she's at the vet, which I always say isn't necessary, but I understand. They don't know the animal, the animal doesn't know them, they can't really take chances. So they have to like restrain her head the whole time. And it's just a really not fun experience for the animal. So every time we get home, I'm always just really gentle with her when I put her back in her tank. But oh my God, she was 
so chill. She was so happy. She was just probably like, I feel so fucking good. Like, I feel amazing now. That's <laughs> out of me. Like, I can only fucking imagine. And uh, yeah, she was totally fine. But God, the vet quote said, I have never seen so much matter. She'd never seen that much come out of an animal. And yeah, it was, it was just hilarious. So thank you for watching the video, Sai guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave me a comment because I thrive on the validation of strangers and I'll see you in the next one.